welcome today. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for what you're doing. That you are speaking to us, each one of us, in our lives, wherever we are. Right now it's September 5th, 2023. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. The Lord, our God, he loves to speak to his people. And I'm going to prove it to you. As you listen, he's going to prove it to you. Because if you will listen to what he says in his word and to your heart, inside your own heart, you will hear the voice of God speaking to you. And as you listen carefully with the ears of your spirit man, the ears of your inner man, and you forget the lady, you forget your life for just a moment. Isn't that wonderful? When you can do something so fun that you forget your troubles. Well, God is going to speak to you and he is going to release what he's saying over you which is very exciting, and over the earth. Because when the Lord says something, it goes forth from his mouth and does not return to him void. Amen? And we're very excited to hear what he says. Now, this is what he said to read. This is um, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 24. I'm not going to tell you that it's pleasant, but I am going to tell you who is God. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Almighty Creator. He's breathing right now into you so that you can breathe. He brings rain on the just and the unjust. He sits above in heaven on his throne. He is the Almighty God. Amen. And he releases things to his creation right now and always, always has. He is a great God. Well, in the book of Ezekiel, if you dare to read chapter 23, the Lord has brought me back to that over and over and over as I sing to him the song of his vineyard, where he feels rejected and neglected by his own people. And we sing that song. It's not a popular song with mankind, nor even the church today, but it is popular with God. And that's my target audience. So God, we give you glory. Creator God, you are real or I wouldn't be here. You're real and you called me to do this and you're with me and we do this together and there's no greater joy in my life than to serve you wherever you are and what you're doing. In Jesus' name, we're like little kids following in his footsteps, doing what he is doing, whether popular with man or not, irregardless. Because we have a God who looks down upon us, his eye is upon us, and the work will not cease. Amen. So here we go. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, he has brought me back to it a number of times, and he, it's, it's rough. It's what his people were doing before him in closed doors. They didn't know he could see, I guess, but they were doing horrible things priests in his house, the people, all the people, except for maybe a few remnant, were doing these horrible things. It was upsetting God. What if your spouse was out there doing horrible things? Would it upset you? Absolutely, it would. Because you love them, and they made a commitment to you, and they turn from you, it hurts. And so the Lord is a hurt, he's hurt by these things. He has anger, and he is a jealous God. I mean, he created this beautiful... What if, what if you even had a little baby, and you took care of it all your days? But as soon as it could talk, it starts saying, Get away. I want the dragon to hold me. Get away, mommy. And the dragon was right there. The hold. The child. And the child constantly went toward the dragon instead of the maker. That's happened to God. It's happening to him right now. Right? And we don't want the dragon, the devil, or darkness at all. We want God to come into your life and my life. We want God 
to be the one that we call to in snuggle with, right? We don't want to go the way of Cain to kill our brother. We don't want to go the way of Satan to kill, steal, and destroy with our mouth or our hearts or our hands. We want to sit before God in a humble repentance because we will live forever. And that's reality. Now, he has had me read Ezekiel 23. I dare you. I double dog dare you to read it. And to know this, he said what people, not all, but many, in his so-called church today are doing worse than what is depicted in Ezekiel 23. When he tells me things like that, sobers my heart. And I know that I'm not called as a sweet devotional reader. I am called as a warrior of the Most High God to say what he's saying, to expose what he hates, and to bring forth his plan through his word on this earth. And there are so many of us, children of God, doing that today. Why did he ask me to read Ezekiel 24? I'm not sure. It's pretty rough. The title is The Siege of Jerusalem. In the midst, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, write down the name of this day, this very day. The king of Babylon has laid siege to Jerusalem this very day. And utter a parable to the rebellious house and say to them, thus says God, the Lord God. You see, today we're not dealing with a physical king of Babylon that's coming into your land to take you captive or me. We're dealing with a spiritual reality. The Bible was written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the age had come. And the flood today is not a flood of water, but it is of darkness, currents that lead into hell and these horrible perceptions and acceptances of things that the Lord does not accept. Across the earth, there's great sin and darkness. If you have a remote, all you have to do is turn it on, and you can see there's great sin and darkness. I don't believe that God is saying that something in the natural realm, some mean king, some Famine or plague is coming to get people. I believe what he's saying is pick a side. Spiritually, pick a side. Is it the Lord Jesus Christ that you're after? He died on the cross and his blood was shed so that your sins could be forgiven. God will not remember them whatsoever. And you can go free and skip into the realm of eternity with God. It's pretty amazing and glorious indeed. We are all welcome into his arms. He has a hole in his heart you shaped, and you are welcome with, to come to him wherever you are and to be with him. Amen? You're welcome in the name of Jesus. And what happened to God was that there were many people who found that name to be an object or a vantage point for self-glorification. And when you use that name to dishonor God, his name, Jesus Christ, Christian, if you use that name and dishonor God, there is great wrath. A lot of times we are taught the truth that Jesus Christ is so merciful. He is ready and willing to forgive any repentant heart anywhere. People have an option because Jesus died on the cross for people. Amen? Not, not the angels. They already made their decision. It's different. But humanity was given this option to come home to God. All we have to do is raise up our arms to God and say, God, We want you to pick us up. And I would suggest saying that now or turn us off, you know. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, God. Now, as we come into the embrace of God, he is 
um, preferring today to let us know who he is, what he's like, what did he do to Jerusalem? These are not popular messages. This isn't what most people want to hear. But if we can hear and understand that it is terror to understand the message of God. A lot of people are waiting. They're going to church every Sunday. They're despising God with their words against his people. They are full of pride and conceit. And they call themselves Christians right now. They're doing abominable things and pretending God cannot hear them. They're hurting one another. God doesn't like that. He hates it. Amen. He really doesn't like it. So all these things, and worshiping other gods, which he really doesn't like. Because when we align with Satan, we empower Satan against his children, then God has to fight against us. We don't want to do that. It's not, it's not wise. God would like to introduce himself from the Old Testament. And so we're going to listen. If you got an ear to hear, praise God. Um, all right, we're in Ezekiel 24. On that day, <clears throat> I'm coming. The king of Babylon has laid siege to Jerusalem this very day. There's no more time. At some point, there's no more time where the darkness overtakes the false and the Lord lifts up and raises up his children. And you decide which side to be on when that happens. In the camp of the enemy... For those who are willingly in that camp to despise God and to speak harsh things of his glory. He doesn't like that. Those who will do that, this is what's going to happen. I mean, this is what happened to Jerusalem. Set on the pot, set it on, pour water in also. This is a parable he's saying. Put in the pieces of meat, all the good pieces. The thigh and the shoulder, fill it with choice bones, take the choicest one of the flock, pile the logs under it, boil it well, seethe also its bones in it. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose corrosion is in it, and whose corrosion has gone out of it. Take out of it piece after piece without making any choice. For the blood she has shed is in her midst. She put it on the bare rock. She did not pour it out on the ground to cover it with dust. To rouse my wrath to take vengeance. I have set on the bare rock the blood she has shed, that it may not be covered. Therefore, thus says the Lord God. Woe to the bloody city. I will make the great the pile great, heap on the logs, kindle the fire, boil the meat well, mix in the spices, and let the bones be burned up. Then set it empty upon the coals, that it may become hot, and its copper may burn, that its uncleanness may be melted in it, its corrosion consumed. She has wearied herself with toil. Its abundant corrosion does not go out of it, into the fire with its corrosion, on account of your unclean lewdness. Because I would have cleansed you, and you were not cleansed from your uncleanness. We won't go on with that. I would have cleansed you, saith the Lord in his word. I would that you would let me gather you under my wings, but you would not. Now, what the Lord, I believe, is angle on this today is not just for the audience to pick a side. I can't pick it for you. He can't pick it for you. You have to pick your side for yourself. Do you want to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God? Receive the blood of Jesus Christ as your forgiveness of sin. And then you're not in that pot. You're not even in that pot that is described in the parable. You're not burnt up. You're not within the place that he will bring judgment. In the book of Revelation, the great Babylon receives judgment. She exalted herself. 
as God's person. She finds herself in a great trial and trouble eternally. And so do all who are there with her. That is why he said, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, that you partake not of her judgments. And this word is speaking of the judgments written in the book of Revelation. Same judgments. God would have cleansed you if you would but humble your heart and repent, he says to all people. There comes a time when time is up and you have to make a decision. And I would suggest humbling yourself before God as fast as you can. Now the good news for those who will do that, okay? There are two sides. There is a battle waging and God is ready to take his soldiers and his kingdom army into battle and destroy his enemies. Sometimes they are people. Sometimes they are evil beings. Sometimes, who knows what they are, angels that fell. All the bad stuff, we don't even want to know. I mean, why would we want to know about that? But there is a kingdom of darkness, and the Lord God stands up against it today. And he says, I will have justice and be glorified in my people. Where are we? So we've come out of her. Because if you haven't, you turn this off, I would imagine. So this just going to make you mad. If this makes you mad, humble yourself and repent. It's an eternal situation. Amen. Now, did God, is, did God make them mad? Sure. They were probably really mad at God when the Babylonian king came in and killed him and did all the horrible things to that very day that God asked me to read today. And there is a very day when the darkness will overtake those who are called by it. It's just the reality. And it's in scripture. It is a scriptural reality. Come out of her, my people, quick. Like time is short, come out of her. Because the battle lines are there. And you still have time to jump over into the kingdom line. The kingdom of God is at hand. It has been for all that time. So that we could reach forth into it through the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's do that. Let's do it now. In spirit and truth. God, forget everything I ever knew about you. And forget my religion. Forget my pious pride. It is as filthy rags. Every right thing I feel like I did before you, it's as filthy rags. My doctrine is wrong. My heart is wrong. All of us can say that and be right. So God, whatever is wrong about me, search me and forgive me by your blood that I may not partake of the judgments written and spoken of today by your servant. In the name of Jesus Christ, we fear God. Thus says the Lord God. It's what he said. It's what he is. It's who he is. And he's a jealous God. And the battle lines are drawn. Jump over to the kingdom of God. That is my advice to you and me. And God, please, in any way that we are still aligning ourselves with the queen, the queen of Babylon or whatever that is in the book of Revelation, the darkness. Ahola and Aholaba, we reject that in the name of Jesus. And we accept your correction, your correction in the name of Jesus over our lives. Amen. And he would wish, he wishes, and he would have us all repent and not be destroyed. He wanted that. He, let, he talked to Israel. Remember at the beginning of this, I said God wants to talk to us. He talked to them through Ezekiel. They, he saw great visions of, of heaven and the four living creatures. And he, Ezekiel had an anointing that was like I've never read almost in scripture. He had a very unique anointing, had the word of God. He spoke to them and they wouldn't listen. How often I would have gathered you under my wings as a hen does her chicks, but you would not. Well, let's not fall into that category today. Amen. 
Now we are going to talk about something wonderful and close. Now, those of us who receive Jesus Christ, we are going to a different place. Amen. I don't pretend to understand the great calling away when that will happen, but at some point in the twinkling of an eye, we will all be changed and called away, and God will take us home. Now, in my heart, I'm already home, and in your heart, you can already be home. If you would, seek him with all your heart and fall on him and be broken. The rock, that it wouldn't fall in you and crush you into powder. But you fall on the rock and be broken. You trust in his blood and not your own anything. The only thing that's righteous about me is Jesus Christ. And the same is true for you. It's just a matter of how much he himself, his person, dwells in us and is formed in us. That is the purpose of his creation of mankind. That Christ Jesus, through whom all things were made, would have a people that are in his image and after his likeness. That he has come up in us, God, risen up in us that we may pop our own heads off, you know, spiritually. Stop thinking, stop reasoning, stop being sure you're right and let it go and trust God like a child. The only way to enter the kingdom of God is to become like a little child. Amen. And when we do that, then we can believe God for really cool stuff, like heavenly dwellings. Not just after we die out of our body, but even now. Because he said, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That means, beloved, when we choose Christ. Now we're on the other side of this. Amen. We've chosen Christ. And his presence is so strong. I mean, that you listen to him. It matters to him. Now you're here still listening. And God, we thank you. God, I thank you for the courage to speak things that are not popular. And they might have to do the same because we're, we're in these days. If he shows you something, you have to share it. Otherwise, like Ezekiel 3, you'll be accountable. If you don't, for them. If you, if, if you see something like a pit up ahead in front of people, but you don't warn them, then you're accountable to their soul whether they hear or don't hear, right? You're only accountable to obey God. And we are in the days where we got to tell them, look, pick a side because the battle line is here. You still can jump over into the kingdom. Maybe when the battle starts, I don't know. Maybe we can go rescue them out. I really don't know. It's possible. Our heavenly dwelling. For we know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have... A building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. You see, even in our bodies, we can, in prayer time, be with God. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places even now. So we can have experiences with God. He can speak to us. He can show us things. He can. And maybe even take us places like he did Ezekiel and Daniel and Ezra and every writer of the Bible. God took and showed them things. He's no respecter of persons, and if that's what you want, if you want a relationship with God where he will show you wonderful things, and maybe not so wonderful sometimes, it's amazing and wonderful, and you know what I'm talking about if you already live there. Amen, and that's great and glorious. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. If indeed putting it on, we may not be found naked. See, we already, the book of Revelation chapter 3 to the church of Laodicea. They thought they were rich and have need of nothing, but they were poor, blind, and naked. Deception in 2 Thessalonians 2 is a disgusting and scary matter in our day. And we don't want to think we're clothed in the big clothes of our great our greatness when we're literally naked. And Paul is saying here, if you're not clothed on your in your heavenly dwelling, we're naked. We have to have Christ. That's why Adam and Eve knew they were naked. Because they had eaten from what God said, don't eat from that. They disobeyed God. And the, the covering came off of them and they knew that they were naked. So we know that we're naked until Christ. The Bible tells us to put on Christ. And when we do that in our real lives, Christ in me, Christ on me, 
and we just yield and yield and yield and go through things and learn and grow and be humbled, corrected, disciplined to become a, a strong child of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. And every day we, we groan for God, the righteous, through time. Groan for God, that we would be changed by God and with God and further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now, in our very lives, the Lord is offering this. Do you know why? Because we are called to enter into the battle with him. We are called to fight beside our king in the great kingdom. This is the final showdown, the final countdown, where the Lord our God will be glorified and everything that exalts itself against the God will be destroyed and pushed back. And from his mouth comes a fire that burns down everything that dishonors him. So we get to be behind him in this battle where we agree with him and speak his word and trust in him and be his and be further clothed. You see, the Holy Spirit comes upon my body so that I have energy and strength and clothing, the garments of praise. I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be clothed. Amen. And so there are people who are clothed today, further clothed. We don't want to just leave our bodies and end it. We want to live every day to the fullest to serve our God. And the battle line is drawing near. And we need to pick which side. Everybody needs to pick which side. Valley, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Choose Christ. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. So we're going to fight in his army because we're swallowed up by life. And life more abundantly. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God. Who has given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage. And we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord, of course. But we can be in a way. In our prayer time, we can lay down our lives and seek him. God, what are you thinking about today? What do you care about today? Put on my heart what is on your heart that we might pray this in together and defeat your enemy together or however we do this. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, make it our aim to please him. Amen. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God. And I hope it is known also to your conscience. I hope you know that I am coming with the heart of God and love for you. I hope you know that. But God knows whether you know or not. Do you see? And that's just how it has to be when you're sent by God. Because if you look to their response to decide if you're doing good or not, you're looking at the wrong measure. And God doesn't, it doesn't, it's not showing that you're living for him. It's showing that you're living to people like you. No, we will all appear before Christ. Those other people, whatever they thought about you will not matter at all. They will stand before him too. Amen. Every one of us will be standing before Christ. We won't be able to accuse each other, blame each other or anything. We will only give account for what you do and what I do individually ourselves. That's only just, right? I'll give account for my decisions and so will you. And that's justice. And that's what we're about to, we're about to see a lot of um justicing, justice prevailing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
Okay. Now, I'm going to finish this quickly. This is what he said. Enoch 42. Wisdom found not a place on earth where she could inhabit. Her dwelling, therefore, is in heaven. Wisdom went forth to dwell among the sons of men, but she obtained not a habitation. Wisdom returned to her place and seated herself in the midst of the angels. But iniquity went forth after her return, who unwillingly found a habitation and resided among them as rain in the desert, and as dew in the thirsty land. So I will close with that. Wisdom is very desirable. What is the beginning of wisdom? This is your quiz. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Now, when we fear God and we humble ourselves, we receive the blood of Jesus over our lives, which is the only prescription from the doctor. We receive his blood so that we can be forgiven. Amen. And when we do that, we are following wisdom. It's wise to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Yes, it is. It is wise to come like a child before God, excited and full of wonder and love. Amen. It is. It's wise to look upon one another with love as much as possible. It is. And that's wisdom. But when there wasn't a place for her to dwell, you think of it like a dove trying to find a place to land. Um, wisdom would be like a dove trying to find a place to land, and, and the person isn't behaving according to wisdom, and they're not receiving wisdom. You shouldn't hurt your brother. You shouldn't talk bad about that person. You shouldn't do that. There. Be quiet. Oh, all right. Well, then I don't have a place here. So she left. She dwelled in heaven. Now, somebody is going to take that empty space. It's a fact. If I have water in a cup and I pour it out, air will take the place of the water. If I have a glass cup and I break it, air will take the place of where that cup stood in the air. Are you with me? Something will take the place, whether wisdom or iniquity. But when wisdom is rejected, iniquity comes in like a flood, which is what we see today in the world. And the iniquity came. They didn't like call on iniquity. It just is what happens when you don't choose wisdom. It's a simple like fact of biology, of, of physics. When you don't choose wisdom, something else is going to take up the space because something has to take up the space in your life, and in the world. Well, let's choose wisdom and honor God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and love our neighbor as ourself. That's a wonderful plan, and that's wise. But when she returned to her place, she didn't... I mean, if you, if you deny wisdom, she'll go away. Do you understand what I mean? Because if you like, I'm not going to listen to that. No, I'm going to burn my own house down. I'm going to do whatever I want because I am uncorrectable, you know, or whatever. Iniquity will take that place. And iniquity is the wrong side of the battle line. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. So our iniquity would be forgiven. So let's, so you can see the importance of seeking wisdom and remember, God said, anyone who seeks wisdom, I will give to them. Press down, flowing over, liberally, and will not hold back if you ask for wisdom. So let's do that. God, we ask for wisdom to dwell with us. That iniquity will not have a place to land. In the name of Jesus. And when we do that, we live like Paul was describing in 2 Corinthians 5, our heavenly dwelling. And we also live like this. And I will close. Enoch 43, I beheld another splendor and the stars of heaven. Now these are the people of God, you'll see. I observed that he called them all by their respective names. He called you. I have, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you and I have called you. God has called you to himself and to do something for him like I am right now. He called me to speak his words into this planet and I will do it. Like Ezekiel, I will, because I love him. And he called me by my name, and I heard him. 
In a righteous balance, I saw that he weighed out with their light the amplitude of their places in the day of their appearance and their conversion. Conversion of a sun, star, is matter into energy. We give our lives to God, he burns it up, and we shine like the firmament of heaven. We shine with the light of God himself. Isn't that cool? When we give our lives, we find life. Jesus told us that. We lay down our lives, and he let, we let him burn them up. Oh, you're going to be so disciplined. He's going to say, you did bad stuff and you're going to have to so, I'm so sorry. You may even have to go apologize to people sometime. I don't know. But I promise you that when you make it right, God makes it right. And you will shine. I observed that he called them all by their respective names. And that they heard in a righteous balance. I saw that he weighed out with their light the amplitude of their places and the day of their appearance. In their conversion, splendor produced splendor. And their conversion was into the number of the angels and of the faithful. You see? Splendor of God in me produces splendor of God in you. If you're willing to listen through to what God says unpleasantly to our sinful nature, then you're willing to, then you're able to hear of the splendor produce splendor. Why would God give an arrogant person splendor so that they could be more shiny and say, look, more shiny. I am more shiny. Get under my feet, all you other people. He doesn't do it like that. He looks for the lowly and the humble. You. Splendor produce splendor. So his splendor in me produces splendor in you. It's fire is contagious. And their conversion, when they lay down their life, the matter of their lives, the physical lives, the earthly tent. And trust in God. Amen. And their conversion was into the number of the angels and of the faithful. Then I inquired of the angel who proceeded with me and explained me secret things, explained to me secret things, what names, what their names were. He answered, a similitude of those has the Lord of Spirits shown thee. They are the names of the righteous who dwell upon earth and who believe in the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. Shine, beloved. Thank you for listening. God, I pray right now for everyone who listened that they would feel the splendor rise up from their inner man if they're humble and looking on, on this message from uh, with eyes of humility and love towards you. Give them splendor and blessing and well-being. And God, we want to be further clothed today that we might fight for you and your kingdom. Beloved, the battle lines are drawn and you're going to pick a side. And your side is going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you can share this message that other people might also be found on this side of the battle. The battle is upon us right now. So jump to the kingdom side and lord we pray across the earth anyone listening in faith and in an intercessor listening my brethren that i love listening god we pray together that you would please draw as many as will into the kingdom of god for the coming battle in the name of jesus we pray and believe you amen and we do believe him he can do it but that's what's going on next you know Moving forward, it's battle time, so be ready. Amen.